Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxcotech. You are watching series Getting Easy with Apache Airflow. This video is not an introductory, nor it's meant for beginners. In fact, it's about what it takes to use Airflow on production level. By that I mean is running more than 100 DAGs to achieve business needs. Hi, my name is Anam Shiraz and I am a data engineer here at Jagex. Airflow was becoming a go-forward tool for not only us, but analysts and data scientists and across other teams as well. And everyone was adopting their own methodology for managing and deploying the instances. But almost everyone was struggling to maintain their Airflow instances on issues like library management, scaling, syncing and upgrading Airflow versions, deployments, rollbacks, and etc. So we as a data engineer then defined a standard way of how to easily spin up a new Airflow instance and bring a standard resolution so that it is easily manageable for us and usable for other teams. The resolutions that we made were based on the following points. So the first thing we had to make sure is that we need to keep track of the current state of Airflow as well as the DAGs versions to help us figure out that which set of tags were running on what date. So the second was we needed an easy and not an over-engineered process to revert back to the previous DAG versions. And the third one is how to avoid DAG code with Airflow code and keeping isolation between them because I've seen a situation where people have been using DAG codes within the Airflow repository just for the ease of building Airflow images from there. And on the deployment side, we'll be discussing how we are managing to release next Airflow versions via Helm charts and Terraform. Then I'll be giving an overview on what steps are involved in our CI-CD pipelines to automate the entire deployment process. Last but not least, how we manage package dependencies and avoid package conflicts between the DAGs. So for versioning, all we wanted to achieve was this as shown in the picture. We'll have a single version of Airflow deployed in production that represents sets of tags with specific versions. So our initial thoughts were to have an Airflow repository where you will have all the DAG codes as well as a Docker file, which is going to inherit from the Airflow base image, install the DAGs, picking up from the custom DAGs repository into the Airflow DAGs repository. And if required, we'll install additional Python packages and then finally generating a custom image for our Airflow. The problem here is that all of the DAG code is in the single repository. So imagine a situation where we have like more than hundred of DAGs. So every developer will be accessing the same repository to make changes on their own DAGs, which is like really hard to manage. Since repositories are cheap, so we split each DAG to its own repository. Now the question is how to track which DAG version to capture while building the Airflow image in the Airflow repository. The easy approach here we followed was using Git submodules, where each of the DAG repository is being served as a submodule to the Airflow repository. In this way, you can maintain a specific state of the DAG by referring to its master branch, working branch, or even a specific commit. You are going to initialize the DAG submodules in Airflow repository by using the following command, git submodule add and the address of that specific DAG repository. And this is a one-time process. Once you have initialized the DAG in Airflow repository, the next is to update that submodule. We'll look at that in the next slide. Representing timeline of our Airflow repository with the two of the example DAG repositories where the developer of DAG2 and DAG1 decides to have version 2 and version 3 of these DAGs respectively into the Airflow repository. So all they will do here is to update the submodule as git submodule update in it. This fetches the latest master branch of both of these DAG submodules into the Airflow repository. From there onwards, the developer makes a commit into the Airflow repository and then generates a new version as 010 and finally deploys it to ECR. Now, some times later, the business realizes that there has been some issues with the recent state of the DAG1. So the developer want to go to the previous state of the DAG1. So in this case, version two, all he will do is in the Airflow repository, he will mention the command git checkout v2 from the DAG1 submodule directory. In this way, now Airflow repository is keeping track of the version two of DAG1. And by the way, I'll be starting the series on introduction to Git and specifically how to use Git submodules very soon. So moving on, once the developer updates the state of DAG1 submodule in Airflow repository, he then generates a new version of Airflow repository as 011. 
which then again gets deployed to ECR as the new Airflow version as 0.1.1 containing DAG1 version 2, DAG2 version 2. And as part of this whole process, we are also maintaining a good practice of mentioning the current DAGs as well as the operator versions in the DAG code while defining the default args of the DAG. In this way, you will easily be able to view the current version of the DAG from the web server UI. So far, we have seen that it is easy to maintain DAGs on their own repository. We can use the old version of the DAG by simply reverting commits or even going back to the previous state or version of that specific DAG. We can also view the current state of the DAG version from the tags visible in the web server UI. Now let's have a look at the next two points of the deployment side of Airflow. So the story continues from when we upload the images into Amazon ECR repository. And also we have a separate Helm chart repository where we are maintaining our own Helm charts for Kubernetes. They are being deployed to S3. Both of these are being fetched from Terraform where we are having three environments for dev, UAT, and production, each referring to their own Helm values, pointing to their own dedicated resources in AWS Cloud. We are using Terraform Cloud, which gets automatically triggered whenever there is a change in the Terraform code repository on any of these three environments. Hence, Terraform Pipeline gets triggered with Terraform Plan, and then finally Terraform Apply which finally updates the resources in their specific EKS cluster. Of course, there are other bits and bobs involved here, like Terraform is accessing AWS Secret Manager to access the S3 bucket to get the latest Helm charts. Next, let us go through the steps that are involved in our CI-CD pipeline in order to make the entire Airflow deployment process easy. Whenever there is a merge in the master branch of the Airflow repository, the pipeline triggers. And the first step it involves is it initializes all of the submodules. So here we are fetching the states of the DAGs which are mentioned in the current master branch of Airflow repository. Once that's done, we are doing a DAG validation test where we are checking whether all of the DAG code syntax is correct and all of the DAGs are loadable in Airflow without any errors. Remember the unit tests of the DAG are running on their own DAG repositories. Whereas here we are just validating the DAGs whether they are loadable in Airflow. Next is we generate the version which is based on our semantic versionings. It identifies whether the next version is major feature or a patch. The way we identify this is it's a patch if someone updates existing DAG, it's a feature or a minor release if someone adds a new DAG. And of course, if there is a breaking change like Airflow version has been changed, then it's a major. The next step is we finally build the Airflow image, which as I said before, inherits from the official Airflow base image. And on top, we can add custom packages here if you want. The next step here is after finally releasing the image tag, it pushes the image to ECR. And from there onwards, this pipeline also makes a commit into our Terraform repository and updates the Airflow version in production, which then triggers the Terraform cloud pipeline and finally the new version of Airflow gets deployed. So that is how we are maintaining the Airflow instances. If there is anything that you think I haven't covered or you have experienced any different kind of issues, Please share with us in the comments below. I would love to hear them and bring my thoughts on how this can be resolved and have a discussion about it on the comment section below. It is also worth mentioning here that if you're not already aware, Airflow is going to support DAG versionings in itself. Airflow already has a proposal for DAG versioning, AIP36. So it's worth having a look over here. The proposal itself is pretty much decent. So from the code view, you can view the different versions of the DAGs from the UI. Maybe by the time you're watching this video, this feature might have already been released, but currently it's under discussion and hopefully it will be released very soon. The last challenge which I'm mentioning here is how to avoid the package dependency conflicts is a topic on its own. So we are going to cover that in our next video. And again, as always, if you have any questions, please mention them down in the comments below, or if you have any suggestions or a space of improvement, please also mention those down in the comment below. I would love to hear them. With that, we are going to wrap up our video. And as always, if this video was helpful to you, please give us a thumbs up, share this with others. And if you are new to this channel, I would highly recommend you to subscribe us because this is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. Till then, I will see you in the next video. Take care.